So Kyle, anything new in your world? Yeah, man. Yeah, I've had a I've had a real interesting time. I spent the last fifty six days, uh, Talladega Nights, Legend of FPS Kyle, just having a real good time, um, meeting new interesting people, learning all sorts of new and interesting techniques and skills and tactics. Nice um, lifelong friends, I hope. Uh, I mean. I'm going to see if I'm allowed to contact some of these people. We'll get to that in a little bit. But yeah, <laughs> made made a couple of real good friends in there. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to talk to them because we're both felons, but but I'm going to find out. Uh, worked out a ton, did a lot of running, did a lot of dieting. I was 35 pounds. Had a real good time. It was nice. uh, it was a nightmare. Is what it, was, Taylor. <laughs> it was a nightmare. All right. I woke up. I don't up, even want to ask questions. I want to let you just I, go. I couldn't sleep the night before. Right. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm up like till three in the morning. I got to wake up at like five to like get going and get there in to time to go to prison, <laughs> to go to prison up oh, crack it down time to get to prison. You're having and to wake so, up early to go to prison insult to injury. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Cause it's a three hour drive from my state. They couldn't have, they didn't send me to the one in Atlanta. They sent me to Talladega, Alabama. All right. Don't go. Don't go. The people aren't interesting and the locale is disgusting. And it's 108 <laughs> degrees while I was there, by the way. So I I, uh, I get a ride. Um, Kitty's neighbor actually drove me. Very nice woman, um, uh, and she came and picked me up as well. And all she wanted was gas. Like she has a relative or an associate, I'll just say, who's also in prison right now. And so she understood. She's like, "Oh no, you're not taking an Uber or whatever, or hiring a car. I'm I'm gonna take you." This is and Kitty. Was, I, We're talking about Kitty's friend. Kitty's yeah, friend Kitty's home. neighbor. Yeah. And so. Uh, get to prison like right before the cutoff like i got to be there by noon so i get there at 11 30. you know i'm gonna enjoy as much freedom as i can before i go in stop at zaxby's uh get myself some chicken fingers some french fries can barely eat it can barely nice get it meal. down i'm I'm drinking like uh Maalox the whole drive because my stomach's so upset and i'm, I'm so stressed out with heartburn like not <laughs> wanting to go the in there and uh so i go in and <clears throat> the guard's like, yeah, they'll be here in a minute to get you. And they, I go through these x-rays and this guard leads me up to this R&D room. I don't even know what that stands for. Maybe it's not research and development. Search, it's certainly not research. <laughs> it's, development. I promise it's not that. It's um, it's a reach around. <laughs> <something> <laughs> and so they, uh, they, they photo me and thumbprint me. God knows how many fingerprints the government has me at this point. I've done at it at least, least 10. 10 times. At least 10. Well, no. <laughs> you <Ew. laughs> and, and so uh they strip me down and there's no there's no cavity search i go through a uh which i thought there might be you know i was hoping. and uh yeah you were hoping. <laughs> you're like, hey i thought we were gonna get a little uh closer <laughs> here on, in this yes. face. <laughs> i want the cute <laughs> one i brought my wet platinum and everything i'm prepared <laughs> uh, so they put me on an x-ray and it x-rays me and i'm like ah i need to lose some weight i can see in the x-ray i'm getting chunky and so go back there. They strip mm -hmm. me down, put me in these super lame prison clothes. Like, like I can't even figure out which side of the underwear is the front. Hmm. There's no I dick even, slot. There's no dick slot. They're brown. Like they remind me of the burlap sack that you would see people wear in cartoons. Oh, and, that's uh, cool. no. On TV, the newbies have a different brown versus orange. Did that happen there? Um, it's funny you mentioned that. I, 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 I liken the experience of when you first get there and when you've been there for two weeks, four weeks, six weeks, and then I'm sure for you know, years as like a, a Skyrim character, like an RPG <laughs> character in Fallout or something. And how at first <clears throat> you're like wearing like ragtag, you've got a spear. And then <laughs> by the end, you're like all armored up and you got a machine gun and everything. You're yeah. like fully kitted and fully geared. Very ragtag at first. Very, you know, you could tell that I just got there. So Were there orange? Was the or uh, jumpsuit orange or striped? Green. There's no oh, jumpsuit at all. No jumpsuit at all. The uh, the uniform is green pants, brown shirt for the summertime, um, mm. and then there's a green button up that goes over that in the winter time. But it's it's so they let you wear a t shirt, and uh, so they lead me from the, that's at the medium security where I was there, and so somebody picks me up and takes me over to the camp, which is just a stone's throw away. So we mm. get to the camp, and uh, you know I I'm I'm shown where my where my barracks, my dormitory is, and everything. They give me a bed. I'm using air quotes because it ain't a bed. It's like a fucking cot. No, I would love a cot. What, what was it? <laughs> it was one of those kindergarten pads that's about three inches thick. <laughs> like it's nap time, but it's on and a on a platform of some sort. On a bunk bed that's like a net of springs, so that it's like when you you throw that up on the bunk bed. But everybody's got their own mattress, so 
they 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 I take, go to the laundry. They fit me up with some uh, some green clothes and some brown shirts, and then they give me some big army boots and some docks and a couple more pairs of underwear. Get all that in a bag, and I go to my my cube. They're called cubes, not cells. We're in a big open dormitory. It's pretty progressive. And each one is separated by a like a block wall that's like five and a half feet tall, kind of like here on me or something like cinder that. I can look over. Painted. Yeah, cinder block wall. And there's about 80 of us in each dorm. And in my cube, there's already two guys in there. And I'm now I'm the third. Uh, and it's uh, it's David, this little Mexican dude, and Block, this black dude. And I'm like, yo, what's your name, man? My name Block. <laughs> and I'm like... <laughs> Yes, it is. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and in there, we've got um, a little locker, you know, and it, there's the three lockers side by side. And you open these double doors up and you got three shelves on each side and you can put your, you know, your shampoo, your soaps, your clothes, all your nonsense, all your food, whatever. Well, everything was fine. You know, I was like, this isn't so bad. First of all, air conditioning is roaring in there. It must be 65 degrees on the hottest of days, you know, they had this massive industrial air conditioning and running down the, the center of the ceiling is a gargantuan, maybe three foot in diameter AC pipe with the big heavy duty industrial vents pointed out to the edges toward the cots. So it's just blowing cold air. Our I tax would dollars keeping felons cool. That's the only thing they spend money on there. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and so I'm like, all right, it's going to be okay. Now for the first, like, five days i had no commissary money we couldn't get it transferred in my bank was blocking the transaction so i couldn't buy any shampoo i had to use like borrowed soap and i was still wearing the bullshit like level one rpg character clothes which is super lame and uh, i didn't know where anything was i didn't know what to do about anything i couldn't even get um a cup to put my water in i had to i had to like someone gave me a bottle of water and i would just keep refilling it at the water station so and then Everything's fine. I'm I'm getting to meet some people, getting to know some people. <clears throat> and then like, and there's a TV room, which I would love to go to and watch television, but you can't without a radio. You have to have a radio and, a, and headphones, which are about a hundred dollars. And of course you need your commissary money to get, to get that. So I got to wait till like the next week to get my, my radio and everything. So I basically just chill in my cell or my cube or whatever until I get my commissary money. I can, I can get equipped at least as a level two character. And finally mm -hmm. that happens. And now I got my radio. I got my, I got, I, now I'm wearing sweatpants. You know, you don't have to, in, indoors, I would just wear sweatpants and a t-shirt and, and flip-flops. This radio powers private headphones, I'm imagining? Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's just a little hand radio. And you would <clears throat> tune it to the uh, a station that corresponded with one of four televisions. <clears throat> On the left, you got ESPN. Don't change it from ESPN. <laughs> That's where it stays. <laughs> just to the right of that, you got the black TV. Don't touch it, Whitey. <laughs> In the middle, you got the Spanish TV. Don't touch it, Hueto. <laughs> and on the right, you got the Whitey TV. Now, you don't need to know this. You could walk in and tell. Because yeah. obviously on the left, is there's Sports Center. Just to the right of that, there's BET or VH1. Just to the right of that, Telemundo. And just to the right of that, it's the History Channel. Oh, and, I was going to say HGTV. That'd be such a funny... <laughs> they're watching Get out of fucking... here. I've got a lot of garden ideas. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it doesn't take long before um, I start... You know, some people know how long I'm in there for. And it. I didn't realize it right at first, but I was told about a week or so in that, like, they think you're a snitch. They think that you are either part of one of those 60 day in reality shows because you don't look like a criminal and nobody gets 60 day sentences here. Like we've never seen that before. Or you've gotten transferred here because you, you're a rat from another place and that's why you've only got 60 days. So they immediately, there's immediately people who don't like me and Shit. don't want anything to do with me and are like talking about doing something to me. How did you find not, this info out initially? I was I was told by the friends that I made about ten days in. They now, were like, "Yeah, don't. you're very good at fitting into new environments, right? Doesn't matter, Boston people, redneck people, even Canadians, I imagine. Sure, but these are felons. Did that superpower work in prison? I got along with the people I wanted to get along with, there, but there's eighty of us in there, so <clears throat> immediately I felt like I needed a representative from each race. So um, I found a white guy who was. Um, there weren't any big, tough white guys. There were only old white guys. 
there weren't any really young and big tough white guys. So I found an old white dude named Pops and I made Pops my friend. Uh, Pops gave me a pair of sneakers the second day I was there. Uh, and uh, cause, so I wouldn't have to buy any, like, like some, like some Under Armour, like sneakers. And then I said, I need a black friend. So I noticed that this big black dude with dreads, big dude had his radio was like busted up and he had it all taped up with tape. And I was like, Hey man, what happened to your radio? And he's like, ah, it fell and it broke these things. I was like, look, I'm leaving in two months. You can have my radio. And he's like, for real? I was like, yeah, you can have the headphones too. And this is a hundred dollars. And to these people, if they don't, not all of them have loving family members sending $150 mm -hmm. a week. Like I mm -hmm. do, or, you know, a bank account that can, kitty can just take some money out of and send it in. This guy, he was like, for real? Now he's my friend. Now he loves me. Now he's coming to me all the time with information and goodies. He, he, <laughs> he'll bring me a pair of flip flops. They're 25 bucks. Here you go, man. I got you something. He'll bring, he, he's like, I saw you like those diet Pepsis. Here's a six pack. He's always bringing me shit. Then one day, well, let me, let me com complete my trio of, uh, of, yeah. of protectors. <laughs> um, then I, I'm, 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 ass I'm assembling the fellowship of uh, the federal prison system yeah. here, <laughs> the Tolkien style uh, band of merry men. And then I was like, well, I definitely need a Spanish dude. And this guy, Snow, is sitting there watching TV one day. So I'm sitting like two chairs from him and I start, I strike up a conversation with him. Snow is a big fucking dude. Um, and uh, and I told him what I was there for, and he thought that was bullshit. And he starts telling me what he's there for. Well, he's a he's a member of a Mexican crime family uh, out of Texas. He's in for trafficking, aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, and fleeing the police. And that's just what they caught him for. He confessed to to two different capital crimes to me while I was there that he had not been charged or or for. Um, on the track, he runs three miles a day, and then he does ten chin ups every quarter mile with forty pounds tied to his waist. And he changes his grip every ten every ten uh, chin ups. So it's a different grip for each for each set. It's He's either these rules. or these or these or the wide ones. They're always different. And he explains this to me in great detail all the time. Like quite, <laughs> he's he's very meticulous about his his routine. Are you telling me this fucker repeats stories? Oh, every day. <laughs> he's been in for ten years, and he's got five more to go. Something like that um, on, on his charges uh, and. Uh, and and he's got a really strong like cholo accent. Yo, home. Yeah, I've been in here a long time, homes. You know, and I'm just like, ah, oh, cool, man. That sucks. You know, you're gonna get out soon. You're gonna see your family. Well, he's after like two days of knowing him. He's like, hey, man, you wanna go work out with me? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, that'd be great. He's like, I'll, I'll come by yourself seven o'clock in the morning. All right, you be ready. I'm like, yeah, I'll be ready. So every day I go with him. We run our three miles. I'm not doing chin ups. I run my three miles, and uh, and and you know have a good day. And, and uh, it turned out that he was watching my back the whole time I was in there. And anybody that wanted to fuck with me, he was squashing it before I even knew anything about it. Cause like the scariest thing that happened was about 10 days in the black guy comes by my cell and I'm sitting in bed reading. We, reading do Lord, we know this black guy? Your friend. The Is dreaded it? black guy I'm giving the radio to. Yeah. He comes by and he goes, yo man, I thought I'd let you know. There's somebody in here that's wanting to get with you. And I went, I sit up in bed, you know, I'm lying down, like <laughs> reading like this. And I sit up, I go, <clears throat> Mark, place here. <laughs> Someone's looking to get with me. I already yeah. have a workout partner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, yeah, they looking to get with you. I was like, well, you let them know that I'm not looking to get with anybody and I won't go down without a fight. I was like, that's not happening. He's like, I'll pass the word on, man, but you watch your ass. And I'm thinking like, I wonder if he's going to add literally at the end, but he's not a smart guy. So he just walks away. <laughs> and now I'm terrified because he's not bullshitting. He's very serious. He whispers this to me and he, he, he's, he's one of my closer associates in there. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, fuck. Now I'm terrified of the shower. Now I'm terrified to go in there. So now I have to time my showers for when snow showers. Now, now me and Snow, the big Mexican guy, like we work out together already. So it's, it, it works out fine that yeah. we both go back to ourselves, get our towels, get our stuff, and we go to the shower. And, uh, and so the shower, you walk into this room and there's five different shower heads. And they're each separated by a partition wall with a shower curtain behind you. It's very private. And it's nicer than my high school showers. It's really nice. The, the shower heads have excellent pressure and never ending hot water. Uh, it's excellent. And, uh, 
by this time I've got good soap. It's the same brand I use, uh, good shampoo. Um, I've got a good towel. I got everything. So you, you walk up to the, the door of this thing. It's a, it's a shower curtain too. And you pull it back a little and you avert your eyes in case somebody's standing there naked because you don't want to get caught or accused of, of cock, look, cock yeah. looking or something Meat like gazing. that. Yeah. Meat gazing. <laughs> <laughs> a dick peek. And you, you, you say, you say as, as aggressively and as, and as uh, much of a manly tone as you can, shower. And, and whoever was last to go into the shower, you don't go shower. <laughs> so whoever was the last to go into the shower, they call back and they answer with whichever showers are available. So if somebody's in one and three, they go two, four and five. And then you holler back going in five. And then you do it while averting your eyes once again, because it's just a shower curtain separating you. And then I would always go in five because that was a handicapped shower. And it was very nice. It had the big, big shower head. Yeah, and the and the like chest high uh, shower thing too. So I would take incredibly fast showers. I get clean, then I get the fuck out. And when you're ready to leave, you say, leave in five. And everybody says, all right. And then you get the fuck out, averting your eyes again. But the whole time, <laughs> I'm gonna say from from the from from the time that dude told me that until like two weeks ago, I was terrified to go to the bathroom. The whole time. Like 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 there was a day when I didn't catch snow in time and I was like, I'll shower tomorrow. <laughs> What's the actual bathroom situation like? Uh, there are three, no, there are four toilets in stalls, just like in a department store or anywhere else. There's a mm -hmm. urinal and there's like six sinks. So it's, it's fine. Um, you know, the toilet paper was awful. I, I immediately bought toilet paper. Like I got some fucking Charmin right away. It is a must have item to anyone who's about to uh, go to prison. Get your Charmin toilet paper. So yeah, the snow guy, it turned out, was like watching my back the whole time. And anytime anybody would say anything about me or anytime I did something I shouldn't do, he would pull me to the side and be like, hey, like one time I pissed and I didn't wash my hands. He said, hey, somebody said you didn't wash your hands. I'm like, somebody told you I didn't wash my hands when I pissed. <laughs> He's like, yeah, got to wash up, man. People, people take that shit seriously, you know, because you're going to touch the microwave or you're going to touch the TV. And I'm like, I didn't even touch my dick. I was, I was like, I just, I just whipped it out. He's like, don't matter. They don't know. For all they know, you're washing your hands and pissing there. You got to wash your hands. And I'm like, I'll lather them bitches up like I'm about to go into the operating room yeah. from now on. <laughs> if it'll, it'll keep anything bad from happening or anybody from yelling at me. So now I'm scrubbing the fuck out of my hands every day in there. Like I've got OCD. <laughs> They're getting red. Like, <laughs> I'm looking around like, all dry, you know how red man. they are? <laughs> I only use hot water. Just hot. Just hot. Like, my skin's coming, cracking. I'm so clean. Yeah. They're coming out like crab legs. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just like, this is just. <clears throat> then I get into a shouting match with a guy one morning and the, at the TV room because there's a it's just me and a black guy. I get up at four in the morning at this point of my, my stay and it's just me and this black guy. And uh, and the TVs are on the local local news like all of them are. And I'm like, I don't give a fuck what's going on in Montgomery, Alabama. I don't give a fuck. I'm yeah. going to change the white TV to Everybody Loves Raymond. I want to watch the sitcom. He goes, yo, we watch the news in the morning. And I was like, well, watch it on one of those TVs, man. There's three fucking TVs here. We watch the news. <laughs> Wait, he's, he's about to crack. I found it later. He's been in there for 14 years, and he's got two more. He's got two more, this maniac. This maniac named Chico. He's coming out takes, soon. He takes them uh, unless he has a fucking conniption fit over the over the morning news while I'm away. Then then yeah, he'll get out soon. So Chico wanted all four of the TVs turned to the the local the various local news <laughs> ABC, CBS, NBC. He wanted all of the local news stations on simultaneously, so he'd know everything that was going on in downtown Birmingham that morning. He needs three different fucking weather reports, three different weather girls. It, and I'm just like, all right, I'm like, all right, here you go. Click 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 click. Happy now? He goes, great. I was like, all right, fine. Won't come back. I just won't come back in the mornings and watch because I don't want to watch the morning news. It for some reason that just seemed real depressing to like watch what was actually going on just outside the fence and down the road. Like like CNN yeah. is one thing, but I just didn't give a shit what was going on. And in, boring uh, as fuck. And boring as fuck. Um, it it was a weird fucking time. They were, um, but th those guys thinking that I was a snitch didn't wear off until about six weeks ago, like or about two weeks ago, 
it was when I started like making more friends when people started realizing like, oh, I guess he he's actually just in here. Hmm. I guess I guess the hmm. I guess judges really do give people two months. So there wasn't enough friends. <laughs> they just got to yeah. know you over time and you started to fit in. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they, they, they trusted me with the locations of the hidden knives. Um, I was trusted with that information. Um, so if you want to slice up like an onion, which is contraband, by the way, we're not supposed to have onions. Or if you want to make your own relish, because there isn't relish out of a pickle. Um, you know, you, I've seen people nibble <clears throat> those items down and into chunks. Mm-hmm. The guys who, the, but, but I was trusted with the sacred location of two of the three knives in the dormitory. Um, I won't say where they were, but they're hidden in public areas. <laughs> I won't say where they were. They're hidden, what yeah. was that last word? In, in like a public area, like like, oh. like not in anybody's cell and oh. not in anybody's locker. They're put somewhere where nobody would get in trouble. They're hidden in a, a third party location. You can't paint it to anyone, right. Exactly, exactly. And, and you know, they've just, it's a really rudimentary blade that you can chop up an onion or a tomato with without mushing it all up. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the, the stuff that people ate in there, I couldn't get over it. First of all, let me start with this. There's a currency in prison. They're called Max. M A C S Max. And I didn't know what a Mac was for the longest time. And I didn't want to ask. I felt like a dummy. And then I realized it about four or five weeks in. Max are packages of mackerel fillets. Oh, I Ew. I was ungodly confident it was mac and cheese. You know, Mm-mm. the craft in the blue yeah. box. I was like, I can't believe Kyle didn't figure this out. I guess if no. these guys are working out all the time, they need their protein, their lean meats, and so they want their max. It what it is, it's a seventy it's a seventy cent item in the commissary. So it's close to a dollar and it's also one of the cheapest things in the commissary, and it's meat. And they all ate it. It's what they all ate. It was disgusting. I only tried it once. Like like sn- snow would cook for me and and I and I ate some of it and I was just like, this is not for me. This is fucking gross so like they gamble with max they 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 loan each other max to for like favors and any number of things like they bet on football games you know i got 15 max that the bills are going to cover the spread uh they'll play poker with max you know i'll buy in for 20 max and he'll have he'll have some like chips that they make out of tearing playing cards in half in half each of those is a chip each of those is a mac Mm -hmm. and i couldn't understand why these motherfuckers were eating max because there was tuna in there and what I ate the whole time was chili. I found right away. Thumbs yeah, down, I, Kyle. This isn't Jackie's chili. This is prison chili. This is good chili. Okay. <laughs> it's a company called Brushy Creek. I wrote it down because I want more of it. That's how good it was. All right. I stopped going to the cafeteria the third day I was there. Not because the food was bad. It was good. It was like high school food. Huh. It was just like high school food. They had That's hamburgers. Right they had hamburgers and hot dogs on Memorial Day. You know, they had hamburgers once a week, fried chicken once a week. They'd have baked ziti. It was pretty good. You know, Swedish meatballs one day. Breakfast was gravy and biscuits, uh, grits, oatmeal, stuff like that. Scrambled eggs some days. Pancakes once a week. It was fine, but I didn't feel like it was good for me. So like three days in, whenever I start working out with snow, I'm like, I'm going to go on a diet. So I, I averaged out to about 375 calories a day for the, the two months I was there. I did the math. Because a bag of chili is 300 calories, uh, and I'd eat one bag a day. But most days, I would skip at least one day. I would eat today, not eat tomorrow, eat the next day. Um, so I would eat like every other day. But one one week, I went four days without eating. Uh, and Jesus Christ. Yeah, because they're not doing a lot. I, I'd run my three miles during, during in the morning, and then you're just like sitting there, like reading or watching TV or sleeping. That's all. That's all you're doing all day. On the, um, so you said you were getting up at 4 a.m. Were you napping? What's the napping situation like? Yeah, yeah. Um, so the the schedule is this. At 5.20 in the morning, the lights come on. Boom. Bright as fuck. Fluorescent right in my eyes because I'm on the top bunk looking straight up. And that wakes you right up. You're, you're up now. And at 7.30, your bed is supposed to be made. Now, you can still lie in that bed. But it has to be made beneath you. So, and if if you get caught still in the covers, the guard caught me one day and he went, ding, ding, ding. You need to make the bed and get over them covers, buddy. I'm like, ah, no problem, man. I just overslept. All right, good day. And just kept moving along. You know, it's not a big deal. Mm-hmm. But I would, that was the only time it ever happened because it was really the only time I've ever done it. It was a fluke that he caught me. So I had a sheet 
and I would cover up with a sheet to take a nap. And I had a pillow that I made by taking a sweatshirt and stuffing it full of like regular shirts. So I had a, like a, a decent pillow and I would nap a lot. I would try to sleep the day away as much as I could, mm -hmm. like, like the middle part of the day when there was like, I'd already eaten or I'd already read for like four hours and I was just, you know, I needed to just chill out and nothing on TV or, or midway through my stay, they took the televisions away during certain daily hours so that people would work their jobs. You know, I would just sleep through that. And but it was, uh, you're trying to create the stasis they have in sci-fi where you can wake up two months later. <laughs> yes, that's exactly what I'm trying to do. And I said that openly. I was like, if I can go in a coma and wake up when I get up, because this is this is like thrown away life. Like, like there's no mm -hmm. there's no there's nothing to gain here. But I did read. I read. An incredible amount. Um, first, I read Lord of the Rings. Uh, I, I got Lord of the Rings out of the library and I read it in five days. Um, it's about a thousand pages or something like that. So I didn't make crazy good time. But Tolkien is kind of a tough read. Yeah. And so I got through that, loved it. I still like the movies better. And I, th I think they did a good job combining multiple small characters into one main character. And mm -hmm. uh, I think that really benefits the story. And then I just started get, getting crazy with the books, just more and more and more. I read The Fifth Wave, which is this alien invasion series of books. There's three of them. They made a movie about it. It's probably a book for teenage girls, but I still liked it. It was, it was, it was fun. The main character is like a 16-year-old girl. Aliens have basically killed like 99% of the human population. And she's kind of on the run and she's like a freedom fighter trying to fight against the aliens. And uh, I loved that. I, I thought it was pretty good. Uh, read all three of those books. They're four or 500 pages each. Um, and then Chiz sent me Anthony Cumia's book. I read through that in a day. He sent me Howard Stern's latest book, read through that in a day. And then, he's, and then I got a whole shipment of books. Um, Kitty sent me all seven of the Harry Potter books. I read through seven all two all seven of those in about two weeks um and the later ones are like a thousand pages so i just mm -hmm. blazed through those things then um she sent me eleven twenty two sixty three, the best book i've ever read in my entire fucking life it's stephen king it. it's stephen king there's a hulu television show about it uh based on it with james franco playing the main character uh which i'm going to start watching tonight the premise is this i won't spoil it there is a portal that this man can walk through that takes him back to 1958 on a specific day at a specific time at the same location he's sitting at. It's it, He's only traveling through time, not space. Once he's through, he can do whatever he wants. He could live there if he wants, or he could just go like shoot a guy and walk right back through the portal and see how that affected the future. If he goes back through the portal, completely resets everything. Same thing. He goes right back, same day, same time as the first time, and he could kill a different person and keep experimenting. Well, he decides he's going to prevent the assassination of John F. Kennedy, who was assassinated on 11, 22, 1963. The only problem is he's in 1958. So he's got to live in the past for five years mm -hmm. and he's got to make sure that Lee Harvey Oswald actually killed him because he doesn't want to kill an innocent man, especially after spending three years there. Cause if he does, he goes back and JFK's dead anyway. He's like he's wasted years of his life and he's got to go do it again and find the real killer. So is he, he aging as this happens? Yeah, yeah. Oh. He starts out and he's 35, but he's going to be 40 by the time he gets back. And so he decides that he's got to make sure that Oswald did it. So he has all these meticulous notebooks that his friend gave him uh, who owns the place where the portal exists and he basically stalks Lee Harvey Oswald and goes really like cloak and dagger like private detective on him, we put planning listening devices in his apartment. He would rent the apartment underneath Lee Harvey Oswald so he could run a wire in and listen to his conversations with this other guy and, and see like what he's up to. He's stalking him everywhere, seeing what he's doing. He watches him get the rifle. He watches him hide the rifle. Like it, it's great. And you, and, and you know, he lives a life during that five years. It's not just laser focus on Oswald because Oswald doesn't even come back into the country from Russia and, uh, until like, I don't know what, maybe 60, 61, something like that. So he travels, the, the portal's in Maine. That's where all Stephen King's books are based for the most yeah. part. So he's got to travel you know, down to Dallas, Texas, and he goes on an adventure the whole way. He meets a woman and he falls in love and he makes friends and relationships. He gets a job that's very fulfilling and, and he changes people's lives for the better. And then uh, and in the end, he's, he's finally got to do something about Lee Harvey Oswald. It's excellent. Love that. Awesome. that. If you're doing real time, if you're doing 
I don't even know if you call a year real time because a lot of these guys are, are nine years into 12 or eight years into 15 and stuff like that. That's real time. Um, one guy had been in prison for 20, going on 25 years and he's old as shit. And he had three more to go. Um, if you're doing that, you want to get a job there at the prison. You want to get into the auto mechanic shop and, and you want to, you want a routine that is constantly filled with things to do. See, my routine had lots of holes in it where I've got like four hours to kill and nothing to do but read. And you're eventually going to get tired of that. These guys have jobs. You know, he's like, ah, I wake up, I work out, I shower, I go to the auto mechanic shop, I wash some cars, I change some oil, I come back, I shower again, I eat, I then I go to the leather shop and I make purses for my wife. I'm going to send her these bootleg Gucci purses that I make here at prison and <laughs> mail them off to my wife. He's like, you want one, bro? And I'm like, nah, I think we might be committing a felony. Just just doing what you're doing there, but, but keep it up. Keep it up, buddy. They look real. They look legit. Counterfeiting <laughs> Gucci purses in prison. That guy is awesome. They look so real. How does smoking work? You didn't mention smoking. Oh, buddy. I Look, I was going to light up on the show, but, but I, I ordered clove cigarettes, which – only have like 10% tobacco. They're mostly like this herb, like they're like clove in there. What's and they, normal? They, 100%. Oh, okay. Yeah. And and uh, so they're not bad for you. I don't want to smoke a real cigarette and get addicted again. But like I was going to light up so I could show you how you light a cigarette in prison. Um, you take two AA batteries, right? Just like this side by side. Obviously, mm -hmm. they're inverted, positive, negative. And they're taped together with masking tape. And then out of a scrub pad, not a... Not a uh, not steel wool, but a scrub pad that has like the the mesh of wires in it. You get one of those wires out, and you and you connect the two ends, and the center of it turns red hot, and you can light a cigarette with that. And there's two classes of people. There are the people who have real cigarettes, Marlboros, Cools, and there are the people who are rolling their own. They have a bag of tobacco and some rolling papers. Now, getting caught, they're not going to give you more time. But they're probably going to send you to the shoe for two weeks. That's that 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 was my experience. The shoe is solitary confinement for guys who don't watch prison videos like me. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, I believe it stands for so. It is solitary confinement. I, I think it stands for solitary housing unit, and it sucks. You're not allowed to flush your own toilet in there. You have to. Hey, it's brown. Flush it down. <laughs> <laughs> and he has to come and from the outside and flush your it looks clothes. yellow i'm gonna let it mellow <laughs> yeah yeah and if you're in the if you're in there you're just locked down 20 23 hours a day i think you get out for a shower once a day and that's it that's Shit. it you're just locked down uh and i didn't want that a guy had gotten it excuse me right before i got there the guy who w had been in my bed i was like where'd this guy go because he left a lot of his shit in his locker like i'll take this toothpaste i didn't have any i'll take this brand new toothbrush all right now i got one Wh what happened to him he's like well the warden came through. We were warned, of course, as we always are. And she was inspecting. And when she walked past his cube, he was stuffing rolled cigarettes into his sock. And she she went, doop, 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 what, what's that? He went, what's what? <laughs> <laughs> and they snatched his ass up and they threw him in the shoe for two weeks. I, didn't, I, I met him about two weeks later. And he told the same story that everybody else had told. Like, fuck, I don't want to get caught. And, and. It's, so you're not going to smoke. You're not going to smoke in there. I would. I would risk it at all. No, I would never smoke in there. There's no way. Like no matter how stressed out I got, um, but everything is available. By the way, like forget cigarettes, because every time there's a count, that's the most important thing as far as the guards are concerned. By the way, guards don't care about your safety. They don't care about what drugs, tobacco, alcohol, contraband you you have. They as long as nobody's bleeding, and you're all there. That's all the fuck they care about. And they come through every three hours and they count you three to four hours, roughly on, um, but you know, exactly when, mm -hmm. um, it, it just varies whether it's three or four hours spread out. That ties into one of my questions, the guard relationship. So you made friends with snow. Uh, you didn't make friends with guards. They weren't there to protect you. Is that a bad idea? So that's a terrible idea. And I had to stop that. The guards wanted to be friends and I had to tell them to get the fuck away from me. Uh, the guards recognized me like two or three of them did. And those two or three told their buddies who I was. And then they became like fast fans and they all wanted like autographs and to like talk to me and ask me about all kinds of stuff that I'd done. And, uh, and they kept coming by my cube talking to me. And, uh, and Snow was like, hey, man, I see you talking to those guards a lot. What's up? And I'm like, oh, they're coming by because I I, I'm, I do this thing on the internet with guns and stuff, and they've seen it before and they like it. So they 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 they're they're kind of like fans. And he's like, oh, that's cool, man. That's cool. But 
everybody ain't gonna believe that. He's like, that looks bad. He's like, that looks like you snitching, you know, because you they seem to like you a lot and you just got here, you know, mm -hmm. that don't make no sense. And I'm like, ah, oh, shit, you're right. Yeah, yeah. So I have to tell this guard, I'm like, hey, man, I appreciate you coming by. It's nice to talk to somebody who isn't a fucking criminal, but you got to stop. And you tell the others not to stop, too, because these guys are looking at us right now. Turn around. And like, sure enough, there's a dude over there like, fucking watching. <laughs> Just mean mugging you, Try, the listening door. in, listening in, trying to see what see, see what I'm saying, see if I'm telling about snitching, see if I'm fucking snitching, and so and I'm like they think I'm a snitch already, like day one they have, and and y'all are friendly with me, and I just got here, and like like I would love to go to your house and chill and and have a good old time and drink a beer, but I can't be seen with you like this, um, because that it's looking bad. So then the, the guards cut that out and they stopped it. They respected what I said and they understood it. So. <laughs> I definitely had to shut that down right away. That that was yeah. not that was not going well. So um, your situation special. Could a regular person use that tactic of like, I don't know, just getting a little guard protection? It no, seems like that's what guards do. Just, they don't guard people. No, fuck no, no. They guard you from me. They guard oh. the civilian from the felon. They're there to keep you there. That is their only concern. That is the all, all they care about. They'll come through. The only thing they would ever yell about, they would they would scream it. Don't you fuck up my count. Because they're coming through to count everybody. And you know they're coming because they just announced it. And you know what time they were coming anyway. So if you're in the fucking shower and when they come around to count and they count everybody and it comes up one short because your ass was in the in the shower and they got to come back around, they might take you to the shoe for that. Really? Yeah. I saw a guy get threatened severely because he was in the shower. He'd been there a year. He, this gay guy that was next to me um, in the cube next to me, he was in the shower when count time came around and he was like, I just didn't know. And I'm like, motherfucker, I've been here for a month and I know. How do you not know? And he's like, I lost track of time. And I'm like, well, don't. <laughs> everybody seems very upset with you. He's like, nah. The next day, they fucking straightened him out right away. They cussed his Who's ass they? out and screamed. Guards? Some dudes. No. Oh, so, uh, inmates. Yeah. Because they'll lock us all down. They'll lock us down and like, like, like they'll take things, they'll take our microwave away oh. or they'll take our television privileges away or they'll take our rec time away or they'll, they'll do something like that. They'll fuck everybody up over one guy. And, uh, it's like the military in that way, it seems. Yeah. That, and so that we'll punish the, the offender. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and that's all it's about. They wouldn't ever, they would never say that, but that's what it's about. Uh, there was a guy right before I got in there who had snitched on somebody over cell phone. Uh, they had a cell, cell phones are, one of the worst things you can have in there, like as far as getting in trouble, um, for whatever reason. In my opinion, they should just let us have cell phones and let and and because I, I don't get it. I don't know why we can't have them, but we can't. There's a lot of cell phones in there. I would I would go into the bathroom and I could hear the guy in the stall talking to his girlfriend. Yeah, babe. Yeah, I'm just chilling up in here doing what I do. How's little Ray Ray? <laughs> and I'm just, I'm like, all right, let's finish this piss. Get out of here. Don't want to be in here. Don't need to hear about Ray Ray. I don't, <laughs> just... <laughs> I don't need to hear about Ray Ray. I don't... As far as I know, there is no Ray Ray. That's right. <laughs> is there a Ray Ray? I don't know. So, and so if you, so he snitched on this guy over his cell phone. Well, th the next day, three dudes beat the dog shit out of him in the cube until there's blood on the floor. And then, the, and then at the end of the day, they decide that's not enough of a beating. So they chase him out to the end of the rec yard and beat the shit out of him again over snitching on them over this cell phone because they knew it was him. I think most of the time you don't know who told on you. But in this instance, they were like, that's the motherfucker right there. And plus, he wasn't popular enough or protected enough or with a group of people enough that you could you could single this guy out and whip his ass kind of like I was. And well, as, as it's like happening across the, the rec field or whatever. Are there not guards like just watching that? Nowhere happen? near. Nowhere near. You could murder somebody out there. Nobody know. God damn. Uh, cube mates. So you mentioned Block at the top of the show, and yeah. I thought he was going to turn into an ally, but we haven't heard him since. Nah, he was gone pretty quick. He, he moved to a different cell because um, there's three of us in there and two is the standard. So he went somewhere where, where he'd be doubled up. Then I, then Greg came in. Greg's a 50-year-old black guy who's the most annoying motherfucker on the planet as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> Real nice <laughs> guy. Greg. Not only does the man talks to himself, he eats all day long and he puts the most disgusting stuff. He's black guy. He puts the most disgusting hair treatment in his hair that I've ever known to man, <laughs> known to man. It's a mixture of kerosene and 
you know those big fat permanent markers that could get you high if you sniff yeah. them <laughs> okay it's that he's rubbing a gel that smells like that in his hair it's so strong that i'll be covered up like a blanket over my head sleeping in the middle of the day and i'll go wake me out of my sleep <laughs> <laughs> smelling salts i don't even have to look i know that greg is under uh, on the other side of that blanket putting his daily four times a day he put it in i counted <laughs> plenty of time four yeah, times a day yeah <laughs> four times a day he puts his hair treatment in and he talks to himself about everything all right about to start this monday monday morning yes sir <laughs> start another day silly i'm you call your cellmates sellies hey, okay I, so he's talking to me but not really talking to me i found out quickly that he doesn't expect a response from me just maybe a nod or an acknowledgement or a smile yes yeah, silly my silly about to get on up out of here about to get on up out, get to the house. He's dictating your life too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, then he, oh, my I, silly feeling a little constipated. I can tell. <laughs> I saw you eating them prunes. Yeah. Them prunes. <laughs> Eat a few of them. You gonna poop, 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 poop it out? <laughs> it's like I got Bill Cosby sitting right next to me, twenty four hours a fucking day. I just, can't. I can't follow your roommate situation. So you moved in. You were the third. Snow yeah. leaves. Greg moves no, no, no. in. Block, no, no, no. block, no, no, no. block, uh, block I leaves. Said it Snow block, was never yeah. his roommate. I made a mistake. And block leaves. Greg moves in. You're back to three. Back to three. Okay, well, I am keeping up. Then David leaves, and then it's just me and Greg. Lucky David you. had had enough of Greg. <laughs> so did I asked. I asked David. I was like, "Hey, man, why'd you move?" He's like, "Man, I couldn't take much more here." <laughs> 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 he was like, "How do you stand it?" I was like, "I didn't know I had an option. <laughs> Can I just leave?" Cell changes. Could you leave? Yeah. Or when it was down to two, you can't leave anymore. I think I could have left, but that would have been pretty obvious why I was leaving, right? I didn't want to be rude to Greg. And Greg, Greg, Greg's gonna like, walk over to your new son and be like, "My former cellie about to catch an ass whooping." <laughs> 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 Ooh, he's about the to lock he grievously sock. underestimated Greg. <laughs> <laughs> the oh, now the nose area. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Silly gonna wish he hadn't fucked with Greg. <laughs> How's my hair smell now? <laughs> uh, yeah, just so annoying. The, no, nice guy, no, nice no, guy. Uh, like, like, but it's but so funny that annoying. someone like just that's just annoying as fuck is in prison too, and the same rules <laughs> apply. Where it's like, God, this guy, bless his heart, but he fucking sucks. Yeah, <laughs> he sucks so much. Nobody liked him. Everybody, um, what did my snow called him kerosene because he thought he smelled like kerosene, uh, but snow can't pronounce kerosene. So it, it sounded more like kerosene snow. Just, uh, when, when snow said shank, like a shank you'd stab somebody with, he said, chank. Yeah. They come at me with a chank. He come in with chank in the kitchen. I was going to box him. I said, I, I don't need no blade Holmes. I got these bowls to cut you up. I'm like, all right, man. Sounds good. Snow's so also I'm still going for a run. <laughs> this is during the run. This oh, is during the run, he would tell me crime stories. He would tell me all his criminal history, even that that the federal government didn't know about. He told me all. First of all, man's 48 years old. He has a son two years Young older buck. than me. Two years <laughs> older than me. I'll save you the math. He was 13 and a half. Thank you. <laughs> it was incalculable over here. Had his first son when he was 13. And he married that girl, but he kept he kept some bitches on the side. You got to. And he's just telling me all of his exploits, both criminal, personal, family life. Talking about the time they drove by, shot him, and he, he stopped. We stop, and he shows me the bullet wounds. Talking about this time they stabbed him in medium security, and he shows me this stab wound that looks like Frankenstein fucking stitched it up. God damn. All this crazy shit. Talking about all the fights he's gotten into. I would. He almost got into three fights while I was there, but people would back down when he came after him. Like, like they would apologize and like, like, like put he their was hands just that up. Big from his pull-up regimen. I mean, he was just down to fight, and if you get in a fight in there, you're in trouble. And he, what did he say? You got to represent. That's what he'd say. He, he was. I, I was like, man, you're about to get out. You got to keep your head down. He's like, mm -mm, got to represent. And I was like, who are you representing? <laughs> <laughs> the family. And I'm like. Oh, oh, you said he was part oh. of a Mexican crime family. He's a Mexican. He's part of a Mexican crime family. They tried to charge him for an extra blanket in the commissary, or not the commissary, the laundry. He said, "Yo, you trying to tax the family? Do I need to let my people know?" And he was like, "What? Who are you talking about?" He's like, "You better ask around. I'll be back for my blanket." <laughs> he came back. I saw him an hour later with a blanket. <laughs> he's like, "You want a blanket?" 
I'll get you one too. I'm like, I don't want to be involved with the family. <laughs> <laughs> I just one black. I don't need a blanket at all. You can have mine if that's what it takes, but don't involve me with your blanket oh, crime family nonsense, me. man. Right. Yeah, I, I, oh, three mile running, right? Yeah. If, if uh, Snow had offered to take me on three mile runs, I'd be like, where are we going to start? Are we going to start at the, Did you run three miles right at the gate and do it next to Snow? Well, there's breaks when he does his chin ups. So that's what you needed to get three miles next to him. Yeah. Because you yeah. had rests. We would take a we would take a break and he would however long it took him to do ch ten chin ups and it took him a while because he has to he took a net um, and put the two medicine balls in it twenty pounds each and then he's got like a an S hook type mm -hmm. thing I can't do it with my hands and one of the hooks goes on a belt that he had had custom made where it it was velcroed together and then stitched so it wouldn't come off and so he'd hook that onto his waist and he'd do his ten pull ups and then we'd go around and every two laps every half mile we would stop and drink water. That's how we kept count. Um, mm -hmm. So he's like, yeah, we drank last lap. So now this is four laps. Or, yeah, we drank last lap. Now it's eight laps. So we keep – it's a quarter-mile track. So, yeah, we uh, – yeah, I could do three miles the first day. I was beat. I was fucking wasted. I would be, um, yeah. I, I almost fainted. Um, maybe the – I wasn't eating at the same time. So, like, I was running and not eating. And uh, when I got in the shower, my hands went numb and my feet went numb and I could barely get dressed. Um, and so I almost fainted in the, I had to turn that water all the way to cold and like blast myself with cold water to like not pass out in the shower. I did not want to be unconscious naked in the shower. <laughs> no. No, no, no. It seems like a poor, choice. even snow. Dandy like, Dufresne oh, realized up, he should have eaten breakfast. <laughs> and it's at that moment, Andy Dufresne realized his ass wasn't nearly as tired as he imagined. <laughs> They um, slid in easily, helped by the lubricant of the chili he hadn't finished that night. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, it was very spicy. Yes. <laughs> were there any fights while you were there? Like, I know no. you weren't in any. You did, so, no. even though there was a constant concern about fights, mm -hmm. it wasn't a constant occurrence. No, it was not a constant occurrence. It was, uh, there, was, um, there was talk of rape, though. Um, I talked to people who had been uh, sexually assaulted and people who had witnessed sexual assault. Um, the gay guy next to me, they had been coming after him a lot. Um, cause he was like 20, he was 20 years old and like fit. And he was in, he was doing like two years for cocaine distribution. He had an ounce of Coke he was selling, uh, basically uh -huh. real nice guy. He was one of the few people who was intelligent enough to have a normal conversation. Like I'm having with you guys. Like, mm -hmm. I was like, what kind of TV shows do you like, man? He goes trailer park boys. It's always sunny in Philadelphia and parks and rec. And I'm like, man, crap. <laughs> it's a winner. <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> That's what he said. That's what he said. He said, like, give it down. Give it down. Just me, just me and you. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it uh, there were definitely like talk of that had happened and that did happen, and uh, both consensual and non-consensual. But it was like you know, don't. Uh, so he had been frequently raped. This guy you're talking to. He managed to stop that from happening. Going forward? yeah, he eventually told on the person, and uh, he was pretty ostracized. It, Snow even said it to me. He's like F he. He told, he snitched on somebody who was trying to get after him. And I'm, I'm thinking like, well, what's he going to do? <laughs> what did, did you, you play into it? Now? Like, yeah, what a, what a bitch. What a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> but what that's a bitch. the thing. Like, I'm with you. What are you going to do? This is like when parents tell their 13-year-old to just pop that 16-year-old in the nose. Bullies are actually very weak people. No, they're not. Yeah. You stupid fuck. That's why they the bully. They're the wrestling team. They're <laughs> yeah. bullying you because they can't. They're and bullying you because they're not at even risk. You know, they, they can easily take you. Dude, I can't, like, the, the scariest thing you've said so far is when Snow came in and was like, Man, there's guys who want to get with you or whatever. Oh, that was the it black was. guy. Yeah, the black and guy was, said that. Oh, the black guy said that to you. Like, if someone said that to me in prison, <clears throat> thank God I'm not nearly as pretty as you are. Like, <laughs> I would have been like, what? What do I do? Like, what's the what's the move? Do I just go about my mile? It stressed mile me run? out. Just... It stressed me out so much. It stressed me out so much. I didn't know what to do. I knew I couldn't tell because you yeah. can't tell. It's it would be the equivalent of like. If you're in like the fifth grade or something and Billy's fucking broke your pencil and you went and told Miss Walker and she goes, all right, I want the class to hear this. You've been picking on little Tommy here. Billy broke his, your his pencil. Billy, you go, you go outside and sit in the hall. I don't want anyone to be picking on little Tommy here anymore. Tommy, you take that supple little ass and sit it back in your seat. <laughs> <laughs> now everybody's like, all right, bitch. All right, bitch. That's what you do. Okay, okay. So you can't tell. You can't, mm -hmm. and that's why I, when I would talk to Kitty or Chiz or anybody, I would be like, "Yeah, no sweat," because the guards are listening. And if if I'm just 
talking to you oh. saying, yeah, man, oh. they're threatening me in here. The guards are going to have to be, because it's recorded and monitored, they're going to have to do something. And it's going to get back that I said something, even though I didn't go like tug on a, a teacher's shirt tail and cry like a bitch, you know, I did sort of say something that got back to the guard that got back to them. That and, makes sense. and I didn't want that because I knew that would only make things worse. Like, like the worst thing that was going to happen was I was just going to have to get in a fight. We were just going to have to fucking fight it out before I was going to fuck me or anything. And we were going to, I was going to end up in the shoe probably alongside them. And I was like, that's not that bad. As long as I put me in the shoe with them, we're straight. I'll steal my books. That's not I'll how my solitary works, then. Kyle. Maybe you're uh, it's not two man. It's two. It's it, they say, call what? it solitary, but it's it's two man cell. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I was joking. Okay, that's a surprise yeah. to me. All right. It was to me too. It, it's it's kind of an oxymoron, solitary housing unit. Yeah, both of you get in there. <laughs> so they could put a rapist in the shoe, and then someone smokes a cig, and they're like, "You're going in there with rapey Ray." And you're like, "I'm so sorry for smoking. Like, I'm so, <laughs> so, I promise I'll never do it again. Please don't put me in there with it." Yeah. Was it a mistake to talk to the wrong people? No, I'm a little surprised that you were able to have white friends, black friends, and Mexican friends. This this is different than I saw on YouTube. <laughs> <clears throat> and and you mentioned that you even liked uh, a guy who was a snitch, and you talked to him, and you said he was a smart guy, and he enjoyed his yeah. company. I would have thought you'd be like, I can only talk with old white guys or something. Well, I wouldn't associate with uh, the snitch outside. Uh, like I would only associate with him in the way I would be sitting in my top bunk, and I can see him over the wall into mm -hmm. his cube, and that's the only time I talk to him. Um, I, he would always ask me to come outside and play frisbee with him or something like that, and be like, no. Nah. I can't do that. No, I don't. I don't want to be seen with you outside. They're either going to think I'm gay. You told them or that. they're going to. Yeah, well, I didn't tell them they're going to think I'm gay. I just said no. I don't want to play frisbee. You know, I, I was polite about it or whatever. I didn't want to make a big deal. But uh, as far as being able to like get along with all the races, there is a lot of racism in there for sure. Uh, Snow was incredibly racist. Like when I said that my cellmate smelled bad, Snow was like, "Yeah, the blacks, they stink, right?" <laughs> and I was like, I was like. It doesn't have anything to do with his race other than the fact that, you know, he's using a, a hair treatment that's specifically for black people. But he chose the stinky one. You know, there <laughs> there's plenty of them that smell fine, I'm sure, because not everybody smells like this guy. You but actually I'll... would offer up like a little response to him. No, like I'd be so no. afraid. I'd be like, yeah, dude, super stinky. My, what else do you believe that I also? <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it was the opposite. I have really a suspicion believe, he's a bad so. swimmer. <laughs> <laughs> they can't swim for shit either. Yeah. Low credit scores, having motherfuckers. <laughs> yes. No, it's the opposite because we're not alone on the track. There's f the black people are the majority. Mm. I'm gonna if I had to break down the racial breakdown, I would say 15% white, 10% Mexican, and the rest is black, right? 75% black or something like that. So as we're going around the track, we're surrounded by black guys, and he's literally saying, "Yeah, the blacks, they got no honor. They'll fuck their own sister." And I'm like. He goes, right? And I go, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? <laughs> and he's, he's older, and I think his hearing wasn't that great because I had to really speak up, you know, and, like, look at him. The funny thing about this guy, not only was, was his English not 100%, neither was his Spanish. I don't know where he's from. <laughs> <laughs> he never committed to get even one language down 100%. <laughs> he had a hard time with Telemundo, and his conversations with me weren't what you'd call fluent. So, but he'd say these incredibly racist things out loud. Clear, definitely within earshot of other of black men like he, he'd be like yeah the blacks they stink and i'd just be like hmm i don't know was he saying the blacks or was he saying some other more he, no he wouldn't he, words he only used the n-word one time when he said that you he's like you can't call them the n-word though and uh and i was like yeah of course you can't well i didn't <laughs> say that but i was like yeah, they don't seem to like that. Where was he at the top of this year for me? It's it's hilarious because to him, that was like a, like he showed up in prison and like something happened. He's like, well, I guess that's off the table. <laughs> <laughs> so what was, uh, so the, the food wasn't that bad. I was going to ask about that. My that's chili surprising. was so good. Let me tell you what I would make yeah. um, when I would eat because I got good at it. Um, I would I would make cheese rice which it comes in a pack. You just add hot water and, and this, this package of rice. I would add a ton of sriracha, five tablespoons of, of jalapenos, an enormous. I, I remembered that spicy foods release dopamine and I figured this would make me feel better. So I'm making the <laughs> spiciest shit I can. I, okay. So ton, like ton of sriracha, 
five tablespoons of jalapenos. I went through three family sized jars of jalapenos while I was there and four bottles of sriracha while I was there. God damn. And, and I would put um, a jar of salsa, four ounces of salsa, and then I would put my 11 ounce baggie of chili in there and I would cook it until it boiled, until like the beans softened up a little bit and everything incorporated. And I loved that shit. And I, was, I would still add more sriracha, like to make it as hot as I could take it until I had tears running down my face and I had to blow my nose like two or three times a meal. And I loved that shit. Like I genuinely wrote down the name of the company so that I can order some and like eat it here at some point. It, it was you really this fucking in good. Your, your cube? Yeah. Or I, would, I, would, I would just eat in bed. Yeah. I would, I would go in the microwave room, cook it up, and go back to my bed. And I would just kind of sit up cross, cross like Indian style. And I would have the bed, the the book folded out to my page, and I would, you know, put the bowl in my lap, and I'd just read as I ate, uh, and and that was my day. That was sort of my daily experience: was wake up, run, take a shower, nap, 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 read, 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 eat, nap, 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 nap. Lights out. <laughs> now I'm gonna stare at the ceiling for a few hours. All right, mission accomplished, and the lights are on. It was. Uh, I had a calendar, so I was marking the days off, um, which seems a little silly with only two months, I guess, but still it was helpful for me yeah, to like, visualize. no, I like it too. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and, uh, man, every time I, every time 9 PM would come on and the lights were about to go off, I <laughs> kill one of those days. It felt good. Yeah. I was, <laughs> I, was good I was living for that. Were you able to sleep at nine? Like if, if I napped during the day, I, mm-hmm. in, in your situation, my sleep schedule might've been not very good. Uh, I could not go to sleep. Um, I was up most of the night, every single night. I, I had a book light, you know, the thing that clamps onto the back of your book. So I'd read a lot at night. And I had my radio, and there were only two radio stations, though. There was New Country, like Modern Country. It's disgusting. Mm-hmm. And there was Classic Rock. So I'd listen to Classic Rock. I'd read my book until probably 3 a.m., maybe 3 a.m., 4 a.m. I could get to sleep. I'd get about two hours of sleep at night, and then I'd sleep the rest during the day. And I liked that because it meant more sleep during the day, during those days loud obnoxious hours that i didn't want to be a part of anyway at and that's night, the sleep schedule you're already accustomed to <laughs> pretty much not too yeah. far from it Plus, no. I, I like the, the daytime is like there's a little danger there there's opportunities to make mistakes maybe you don't worry about that but i i do yeah um one of the things that i didn't like about the daytime was all right so the heat index there was 105 to 108 degrees for a large part of the time i was there and i only wanted to take one shower i'm not gonna be mm-hmm. filthy because if you're dirty, they'll talk shit too. That might, that's just as bad as not washing your hands. If you, if you stink, you're, you're ostracized as well. So I'm like, got to take my one shower a day. But I don't want to go out and get sweaty again and have to take another one. So I'm not going to go outside. So I'm just in here. It's either watching television, reading my book, or sleeping. And it's really loud during the day in there. But I, I got to where I could sleep through it. Last night was weird sleeping in silence. Because even at nighttime in there, it is a symphony orchestra of farts and coughs. <laughs> I don't, but there needs to be a Harvard study on the digested system of Talladega prisoners because there is something. They, those farts sounded wet and hot and angry. Oh, God. It was just, and it was every two seconds. And you're in like a concrete 80, room, so it's resonating. 80, there's <laughs> 70 or 80 of us in there, and it's just... <laughs> just everywhere they're popping off like shooting stars all night and this one guy would have a coughing fit every night <laughs> that we would all make fun of <laughs> and everybody would laugh as people made fun of it he would just start coughing and i'm not going to like duplicate the cough because it would just be obnoxious on a microphone but it's just like oh! there'd be a lot of those mixed in mm-hmm. and a lot like you know when you're coughing so bad you gag mm-hmm. there'd be a lot of gagging and so, and, and so you'd hear some black guy yell spit it out <laughs> like he gonna die, <laughs> he gonna die. And, and every and every time put him out of his misery big tim and every time that you know somebody would say something like eight of us would crack up and start laughing at this guy and and, and meanwhile i'm thinking like that gentleman's very ill <laughs> yeah. dude on that note so sometimes i put myself in this position i need a cpap machine if I don't have the CPAP machine, I snore on an Olympic level. People would make fun of me, I guess, with or without. Oh, it. don't worry, Woody. They they let you have your CPAP in there. Would they? Oh yeah, that plenty Wait. of guys have them. I'm Get not out. making this up. Yeah, my neighbor has one. Um, uh, Tolliver, Mr. Tolliver, and I wouldn't be from... the only one. That's how no, I pictured oh, Mr. it. Mr. Tolliver, uh, put in the... the wrong neighborhood when he was committing a crime. <laughs> Mr. Tolliver is a 45 year old black man, so not quite accurate on that. <laughs> That's my 45 year old black man accent. 
<laughs> uh, yeah, you guys know me. <laughs> so there were a couple of it, and no one cared. No one like like what, no, they're what, quiet. They're mm, this e- is even a, quieter they're, than that. Yeah, they're they're yeah. I, except one of them malfunctioned one night and started like making all kind of crazy noises. It, it made the high pitched squeal really all, all night. Oh, and nobody was, did a thing. Awful. Nobody no, did a thing. I just felt myself like it's like guys, look. I know it's weird, but it like you want me to wear this. Otherwise, I keep no, no, this I whole floor awake. There were guys in there that that uh, Trump passed a lot. By the way, the people in uh, I think I, we'll, we'll close out like the talk of the prison stuff okay. maybe in like eight or eight minutes or so because I got plenty of more, plenty more. We'll we'll carry on next week. I don't want to do a whole show of this, but there were guys in there who needed to get out. It was bullshit that they were in there. Everybody's a big Trump fan in there, by the way. Mm-hmm. Black people, white people, everybody loves Trump because Trump is all about getting the federal prison system streamlined. It's like, oh, are you over 60 years old and you've done 75% of your prison sentence? Well, get the fuck out. I think you've learned your lesson and you're barely mm-hmm. a threat to us anymore. And so he passed this law that says just that. It, I, I, may have, I may be off by 5% or five years up and down on the age and percentage, but it's roughly that. It's like... It might be 66%. If you've done like two thirds or I think it is, I think it's two thirds of your sentence as well as being over 60 or maybe over 65. They're supposed to let you go. He passed that like a, a year ago. Did a couple of good things. Kushner led that. Carry on. The guy right across from me, 66 years old. He's done 75%. He's done not, he's done like 10 of 12 years or something like that. He's sitting over there. He cannot walk. He has to use a walker. He has, he, he snow brings him his meals. Snow's a genuinely nice guy. I'll say this one more thing about Snow. Snow doesn't eat in the cafeteria. He goes to the cafeteria and he gets a meal for the old man. And he gives that meal to him. He only gets one meal. And he gives that meal to this old man who can't make it Mm -hmm. to the cafeteria. And nobody else is going to bring him any food. And then he cooks for himself. And he would offer me food every day. And he's a good cook. He would make breakfast burritos. He He would steal eggs out of the kitchen and onions out of the kitchen, and it would be like a tortilla with refried beans, spam, scrambled eggs, and onions. It was good. It Sounds was fucking, good. it was it actually, I mean, it was, I mean, I don't love spam, but like in prison, it's like, hell yeah, give me some more of that. He would, he made me a nacho bowl the last uh, weekend I was there. We'd been talking about it for a month and a half. He's like, yeah, I'm going to make you a nacho bowl on the last week because he knew I was on a diet. And he just get this big bowl of like Doritos and chips with tortilla, with, um, Refried beans and chili and uh, and and also like steak. He he made carne asada in prison in a microwave. It, it was absurd. You, nice guy. Is Snow the one you offered your radio to? Is that how? No, nah, that's a black guy. Uh, I honestly don't know the black that guy. That was the name. dreadlock guy. Yeah, dreadlock guy. When I finally gave him that radio um, day before yesterday, I told him, you know, I'll give it to you on the the night I'm about to leave. Uh, I gave him the radio. He couldn't believe I had actually fulfilled my promise. He was like. May God bless you and all your future endeavors. For a hundred dollar radio. He, he, he's like holding my hand, like like I'm shaking his hand. May God bless you and all your future endeavors, young man. Folks in well, here, really they nice. say I'm one like thing. Up, <laughs> they say one thing and they do another, and you are honest man, and I appreciate that because that's a rare thing in the world, and that's damn rare in this lockup right here. Thank you, young man. And I was like, I guess I'm an honest guy, man. I, I've intended on giving you this radio the whole time. It was my idea. Like I wasn't, I don't want this radio. But I'm just like, yeah, man, you enjoy. <laughs> Did you have other things to give out? Like maybe. Yeah, I gave, I, I gave shit out to everybody. Clothes. Yeah. Um, uh, Greg, my cellmate, he got my, my cup, my reading light, um, my, my dishware, my Tupperware, my sort, my knives and forks and my shampoo, uh, snow, he got all my condiments, my mayonnaise, my ketchup, my mustard, my my sriracha sauce, my spicy Southwest, my spicy uh, Asian sauce, like all my condiments and stuff that was actually kind of valuable. Um, and, uh, you know, little things that I just passed out to random people. Oh, right, here's some extra earbuds. Here's here's a crossword book, you know, anybody who needed a thing. And Did you a, ever go to the commissary with the purpose of buying things to hand out and kind of ingratiate yourself to the, the population there where you're like, Max for... Hey, 10 of you each, you get five max. Yeah, um, no, but I was going to do that on the last day, but it wasn't my dormitory's day to shop, and they wouldn't let me shop. And I was like, I'm leaving tomorrow. Just just let me shop. I'll go last. I'll be last in line. He's like, no. I'm like, all right, well, fuck you, you piece of shit. You know, all right, I'll just, I'll take the money out of your stupid prison system and spend it in a mall somewhere. By the way, I've got this debit card. I'm not going to show you. 
I, I, it's, it's, it's out in the car somewhere. It's, it's, it's hideous. I have this debit card. It's the most bootleg ghetto shit ever. It's like my, my mug shot on like a Citibank debit card. It says like Metro Bank or something like that. It's got $87 left on it, which is my commissary <laughs> balance. I'm going to use that for online purchases. <laughs> I am not. That's not the card you hand to the maitre d' at Morton's. <laughs> uh, this will pay for half of my first steak. <laughs> I, I, I know we're getting off of prison stuff. I've got one more thing. Did they have whole shebang potato chips there? Nope. Asked about them. They didn't exist. They had Lay's. Uh, Lay's stacks. They had pork skins. They had tortilla chips. And they had Doritos. That was the potato chip menu. Okay. I'm curious about that myth where... You know, they're like, oh, don't take a fucking Snickers from someone on day one or you're going to owe them until you pay them back. Like, was there anything even akin to that? There was a lot of owing people things and everybody paid. Um, there were records kept, paper records um, of who owed who what. You know, whether they were doing football's big. They bet on football a ton, college and uh, professional. And uh, everybody paid up, you know, everybody paid up. Nope. If they didn't, if they don't pay up, you don't want to play anymore, right? And that's the whole mm -hmm. point. So, like, they're gonna pay up. Um, but, but yeah, we, we'll get off this next week. I want to talk about um, the the prison entrepreneurs, uh, the drug class I was forced to take, um, the job they tried to force me to work, um, the uh, the uh, the counselor, my 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 case manager who was dyslexic and and messed up my paperwork six times, my release paperwork. Um, and, uh, and we'll talk about some of the other minor inmates who, who were bizarre <laughs> individuals. Um, and, uh, we'll talk about some of the, just the other nonsense that went down. Like some of the random things like, oh, like, like the guy who shit on the toilet seat or the, <laughs> Wait, and go into it. that, please. <laughs> please I, I, it's a that motherfucker topic. does shit on the toilet seat. <laughs> <laughs> what ignorant motherfucker does shit on the toilet seat that every one of us motherfuckers got to sit back down on. Get your ass in here clean this shit. I ain't cleaning this shit. They pay me eight cents a goddamn hour, and it ain't the clean shit. <laughs> I got Nobody some questions, moved. too. We'll, I'll Nobody wait for moved. Uh, Just a good time. spraying shit all over Just a prison a bathroom. That's risky. Somebody goes, somebody goes, which toilet was it? Hey, what fucking difference does it make? <laughs> I like to use three. <laughs> Is that what he said? That's a good answer. Yeah. <laughs> I like to use three too. It's all it was all in, all the way in the back, you know. You didn't have to sit between two people. You didn't I like spray to under use the... three. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, oh I touche. But <laughs> I'm sure that's what he replied. Man, I'm gonna I... shit on three then. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny because Woody and I and every guest we've talked to while you've been gone, they'll be like, we'll bring up like, yeah, thanks for coming on the two guest show because Kyle's in prison. They're like, oh, fuck. Really? Like for real this time? And we're like, yeah. We're like, God damn. We're like, no, it's fine. He's having a fine time mm -hmm. just reading Harry Potter and, and napping. And it does not sound like that was the case at all. Um, no, no, it was uh, it was pretty. It, it was a lot of nonsense going on. Um, it, it, like like. I, I told somebody this yesterday. I was like, it w certainly wasn't Oz. Okay. Don't, I, I'm not trying to say that, mm -hmm. um, but it certainly wasn't summer camp either, which was how it had been painted by some people. Yeah. As soon as I got there, the guard who took me from medium over to the camp, she was like, don't let anybody pressure you. And I was like, the fuck do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do you, what? It means don't let anybody pressure you to, to, to suck their dick oh. or something like that. Okay, thank you. I so immediately I'm like, Fuck it, this is for real, huh? She's like, she's giving me like, and it's not a dude who might joke around. It's this woman who's she, and she's my, she's a counselor there. She, counselors are like, it's not like a guidance counselor. She's like running a dorm. One of the dorms is her to look over, and like the prisoners are her charge. Um, she's like a sergeant in the army, kind of between an officer and a and a grunt. Yeah, like an, you know, if the guards are grunts, the counselors are sergeants, and then there's like captains who are over the whole thing and unit managers. And then uh, there's the warden, and then there's the, you know, there's there's a whole chain of command in the in the Federal Bureau of Prisons. Um, but yeah, uh, next week will be interesting. Uh, I'll, I'll get into some of the nitty gritty nonsense. You started one of my questions, so let's finish. the summer camp thing. Were you intentionally playing down your expectations for this, or were you just yeah. off target? No, I was intentionally playing it down. I do that with everything. Whenever, um, you know, I feel like if you uh, as a coping you, strategy or a social no, one? no, as a um, as an internet strategy, I feel like anytime that you um, you talk about what what actually bothers you or uh, or something like that, you're exposing a weakness to a lot of people that that like to hurt you. 
you know, yeah. there, there's plenty. So, so you know, you're, 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 you're opening a wound for them to pick at if you do that. If you're like, oh, I'm really worried about this. I'm really worried about that. Well, now they've got something to pick on you about or something to go after. So I've always had, you know, stuck with the mantra of, you know, you can't get blood from a stone, right? You know, just, you know, word, word you know, just always stuck by that. And, and I, I always will, you know, there, there's no, some people you're like, well, I know what gets his goat, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. and, and, you know, I just try to avoid that. But, but yeah, going in, I was, I don't know what my, my expectations were. I suppose my expect, expectations were uh, across the spectrum. I was like, it could be over, it could be this bad or it could be this good. It could be fucking fun and good times or it could be a nightmare. So, but one way or the other, it's two months and I'm going to survive it. And, mm -hmm. uh, and, and I'll just, you know, do it, you know, it, every day. It was such a weird coincidence, Woody. The blocks on the wall from the front of the dorm to the ed to the end of my cell, there were 56 blocks and I had 56 days. And so when I first got there, I counted them just because I'm laying there with nothing to do. And I'm like, holy shit. That's how many days there are. Just it's this panning, head turning motion of counting all the blocks. And I was like, that is an impossible amount of blocks. <laughs> not 56 blocks. 56 blocks. Of not impossible. Not quite. <laughs> but it's Daunt, it was daunting to look at 56 of those oh, blocks <clears throat> as time went on um I, it was like ah 12 blocks can i visualize 12 and it's kind of hard to get 12 in your in your p point of view yeah that's 12 i can see the amount of blocks right there in front of me and then just every time six four two one and one it was like you're in trouble Yes. <laughs> I'm you grinding you down, friends. <laughs> you see what I did to the rest of them? I'm grinding you down tomorrow. I'm gonna sleep so long. <laughs> you got out early. Uh, big I, takeaways for this: two months, is, twenty-eight days. No, each, well, uh, I'm not days. saying it right. You got early in the morning. Uh, you know, I was surprised. I knew that your release date was Thursday, and yes. I got a text at like eight a.m. or something. You know that you were outside. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, my release date, I, I could have gotten out a little bit earlier than that. Kitty got there at like, uh, 8, 15, 8, 20, and I was good to go. Good to go by 7 45, I guess. Something mm -hmm. like that. Um, yeah, you, you get there, um, at noon and that day still counts. And then you leave there in the morning and that day still counts. It's nice. So yeah, it's nice. Of course, oh. it's a, it's a pretty big percentage for someone do, only doing two fucking months, mm -hmm. but in the, for a guy doing 10 years, he's like, Oh, gee, you let me out at 8 a.m. Wow. Thanks, boys. It would have been nice to get out in the 90s, though. Yeah, it's like both <laughs> my parents died while I was here. <laughs> it's all like, I don't know, it, like that last day might present a hazard, right? People might think in a weird way, like, get them outside. Not you. You're in for two months. But if someone did eight years, I, there's no reason to keep them waiting around till 4 p.m. It might freak yeah. them. It might mess with them. Yeah. Um. It, snow it was, snow is the the cool guy of the last eight weeks yeah i'm gonna uh work on getting a photograph of snow um it shouldn't be hard because i've got his name and his prison number uh, his name is nothing like snow it's it's a very odd like spanish name and uh and i'll try to get a photograph of him he's bald like shaved head completely he's like a spanish mr clean um, oh i love that he is the way i pictured him the whole time yeah he's a cholo he's like one of the it's like, remember that scene in Training Day where the three Mexican guys are sitting there with uh, Ethan Hawke and it kind of turns more and more awkward and then scary as he's handed them his pistol and they're playing cards and then they take him in the bathroom with a shotgun to his head? It would be like if those guys' dad walked in. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you gonna blow away that white boy? All right, don't get wet old brains on the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> he called me uh he called me weto which is spanish for white i think is that so, instead probably, probably of more kyle accurate. like he only called you with? yeah yeah he mostly called me whitey yeah because your blanco is yeah i was gonna say that's yeah. black i think right no that's negro oh Negro's okay black blanco's white yeah he called me weto weto what the fuck does weto mean Oh no! Is there an <laughs> yeah, right. That means, <laughs> that means the guy I'm gonna fuck after nine weeks of getting to know him. <laughs> oh fuck, man! <laughs> I lured him into a real oh. sense of false security. Actually, I got the answer on this. It's yeah? it's Weto W E D O, 
a Spanish language derogatory term for a male of Anglo-Saxon or European descent. Quitey. This is used most commonly in a derogatory way by Mexicans as opposed to Spanish speaking peoples. Yeah. Spanish speaking peoples to which the term does not take on a derogatory meaning. Yeah, that makes sense. So he's basically, it's like calling somebody whitey. You know, it, it's, it actually, it's derogatory. It, it also adds, similar to cracker, honky, or whitey. Yep. Oh, Good. I would roll with that too. If they're like, hey, honky, want to come for a run? I'm like, oh, and, and next whatever week I'll you want to do, man. Beep, beep. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> next week I'll also tell you about how, how Mr. Snow feels about the chomos, as he calls them. What is Those that? The child molesters. Oh. Yo, had a lot of chomos up in the medium. We knew how to take care of them. Ain't uh, got no chomos here, but Indio. I think Indio might be a chomo. That's one of my fears. <laughs> that like people would Google Woody's gamer tag and there'd be like a million false accusations of, of like and I just Yo, like, homies! <laughs> I was in the library, did a little Googling. <laughs> yeah, that'd be bad. What is a chomo? <laughs> <laughs> you don't understand. Do you know what a, uh, do you understand memes? No. One time, <laughs> this, this guy be saying children are built for it. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, he was telling us he got rich off video games. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now I wonder what kind of media he really made his money on. You know, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It involved he. Oh man, it's such a ridiculous misunderstanding, and I couldn't change his mind. And he scared the man so much that he was terrified. But I'll get to I'll get to that tomorrow. Thank you.